Hey guys, this is Dr. Farkhanda on Needspire and today we'll be talking about the blood supply of brain. This is a very important topic. We tend to get a little bit confused, but this is a very simple topic also if you understand it really well and we should know it by heart. So, let's start talking about the blood supply of brain. Now, first of all, talking about the elephant in the room, that is the circle of the villus, which is the main circle of arteries that provides blood supply to the brain. Now, let's talk about this in a gross manner first, and then we'll talk about the individual arteries in detail, and I will tell you which artery supplies which part of the brain, okay? So, let's start. As you can see here, it starts from these two arteries, which are the vertebral arteries. These vertebral arteries join together to form the basilar artery. Then the basilar artery gives off the posterior cerebral artery okay two posterior cerebral arteries are given off by this big basilar artery right now this is the posterior circulation we call it okay now talking about the anterior circulation now this is the internal carotid artery okay the internal carotid artery gives out two branches one is the larger branch and second is the little terminal branch okay this larger branch is the middle cerebral artery whereas this little terminal branch is the anterior cerebral artery okay so, you know, we have three main big arteries for the brain that are anterior cerebral, middle cerebral and posterior cerebral. Okay, anterior, middle and posterior cerebral arteries. And this is the circle right here, which is a circle of the villus. Now, what happens is these arteries give off little terminal branches and we'll talk about all of them in detail. But I want to tell you that each vertebral artery gives off a branch which together join to form this anterior spinal artery, which supplies the spinal cord and a part of medulla okay so grossly speaking this part supplies the medulla this basilar artery is for pons this for the midbrain and this for the cerebrum okay now if you talk about the important branches okay first of all we have this branch right here which arises from the vertebral artery itself which is the posterior inferior cerebellar artery how you can remember this is very simple for the cerebrum we have three main arteries okay anterior cerebral we have middle cerebral and we have posterior cerebral till now you know anterior and middle cerebral are the branches of internal carotid artery whereas the posterior cerebral is a branch of basilar artery right so this part is done now if you talk about the cerebellum first of all you have to know that the cerebellum is supplied by two main arteries which are the superior cerebellar artery and the inferior cerebellar artery okay now the superior cerebellar artery is only one okay but the inferior cerebellar arteries are two what are those anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery ica and pica okay this is the superior cerebellar artery right which is coming from this posterior cerebral artery so it is easy the posterior cerebral artery gives out the superior cerebellar artery now where are the inferior cerebellar arteries which are two in number we'll have anterior inferior cerebellar artery and then we'll have a posterior inferior cerebellar artery the anterior one is right here and the posterior one is right here the posterior one arises from the vertebral artery which we just saw and the anterior inferior cerebellar artery arises from the basilar artery right now now the posterior communicating artery communicates the middle cerebral artery with the posterior cerebral artery and then the anterior communicating artery which communicates the anterior communicating arteries right so this is the gross appearance now let's talk about few arteries few main arteries in detail first we'll talk about the vertebral artery okay see the vertebral artery arises from the subclavian artery right the subclavian artery gives the branch which is the vertebral artery now it has four parts okay See, the first part of the vertebral artery is from the origin up to this foramen transverse area of the sixth cervical vertebra. This is the sixth cervical vertebra. Second part is from sixth to first cervical vertebra. This is the second part. Now, the third part lies on the posterior arch of the atlas vertebra, the first vertebra. Okay. And the fourth part of the vertebral artery is the part which enters the cranium through the foramen magnum. Okay. So let's quickly write these parts down. First, second, third and fourth. First part is from the origin up to foramen transverse cerium of sixth vertebra. Remember this. Second is from the sixth to first vertebra. Third on the posterior arch of atlas. 
and fourth part is the part that enters the cranium through foramen magnum. It's clear, right? So if you talk about the important branches, this is the anterior spinal artery, this is the posterior spinal arteries, and this is the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries, okay? And then there are some medullary branches and all, which you don't need to know about, okay? So this is the vertebral artery. Now coming to the basilar artery. Basilar artery is right here, okay? Formed by the union of two vertebral arteries, right? And where is it formed? At the lower border of pons, right here, okay? And then there is a median groove in the pons where it lies. So what are the branches of the basilar artery the main branch i told you is this one here anterior inferior cerebellar artery then these labyrinthine and pontine branches that i told you which are not very important and then the most important the terminal branches of this basilar artery is the posterior cerebral artery which supplies the brain okay the posterior cerebral artery if you look here again this is going to be very very simple for you now Th these are the vertebral arteries which join together to form the basilar artery and then there are two important branches which are this superior cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery right talking about the vertebral artery i told you the branches here these are the anterior spinal artery the posterior spinal artery and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery right another important branch of this basilar artery is this anterior inferior cerebellar artery right now let's talk about the internal carotid artery which is the next major artery of the brain. Now the internal carotid artery comes from the common carotid artery, you know that. Where does the common carotid artery bifurcate? It bifurcates at the level of upper border of thyroid cartilage which is an important question, okay? At the upper border of thyroid cartilage. The common carotid artery bifurcates into the external and internal carotid artery. And this is what we are concerned about right now. Now, the internal carotid artery has four parts, okay? First, again, second, third part, and the fourth part. And now these parts have names, okay? You can judge the course of the part by the name itself, okay? So, the first part is the cervical part. Second one is the petrous part. Third is known as the cavernous part. And the fourth is the cerebral part. Now, see, cervical means neck. So, this one, first part lies in the neck. And if you talk about the branches right here only, it gives no branches in the neck. Now, let's talk about the second part, which is the petrous part. You know, the temporal bone has a petrous part, okay? So, what happens is this internal carotid artery enters the cranial cavity through the carotid canal. There is a carotid canal in the petrous part. So, the internal carotid artery enters through that carotid canal and transverses the superior part of foramen lacerum. Foramen, through the superior part of foramen lacerum enters the brain so this is the petrous part when it is in the bony part now this is the cavernous part again from the name you know that it will lie in the cavernous sinus now what is the nerve that lies with the internal carotid artery in the cavernous sinus this has been asked as a question that is the sixth nerve sixth cranial nerve which is the abducens and the last fourth part is the cerebral part which gives rise to two branches you know it. I told you right now. It gives rise to the middle and the anterior cerebral arteries. I'll show you once again. So no confusion. See, this is the internal carotid artery. Gives rise to the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery. Okay. So this was about the main arteries of the brain and how they are supplied. Now the most important part is this. Because all the clinical applied part lies right here. So if you read about stroke or any other lesion in the blood supply of the brain, this is what you need to know in order to know what will be the manifestation. So what is this? This is the distribution of these arteries. Now, uh, firstly, we'll go through this table, which is from BD Chaurasia, and then I'll subsequently show you the supply on these diagrams, okay? This is a very informative table, okay? The first artery is the middle cerebral artery. Now you know the origin. It is the largest and the direct branch of internal carotid artery, right? Course, we are not concerned about because no one asks us that. But the cortical branches are what we need to know. It supplies the orbital, the frontal, the parietal, and the temporal cortex, okay? Now you can see on the different surfaces of the brain what the middle cerebral artery supplies. The middle cerebral artery supplies this part right here. So if you want to take away one message from this diagram, that should be that the middle cerebral artery is the main artery on the superior lateral surface, as you can see. Now, the anterior cerebral artery. 
the anterior cerebral artery where does it come from again it is a smaller terminal branch of internal carotid artery supplies the orbital frontal and parietal part let's see the anterior cerebral artery here you can see the parietal part the frontal part a bit and the orbital part this okay so this is the anterior cerebral artery so the anterior cerebral artery is the chief artery on the medial surface so anterior cerebral artery is the main artery on the medial surface because that this is the motor motor that you can remember otherwise it, it gets very difficult now see this is a posterior cerebral artery where does the posterior cerebral artery come from it is a terminal branch of basilar artery we know that supplies temporal occipital and parieto occipital parts of the brain so where is the posterior cerebral artery dominating which surface is this this is the inferior surface of the brain right so the principal artery on the inferior surface of the brain will be posterior cerebral artery so in order to read any pathology of the blood supply of the brain including stroke which is very important you need to memorize these diagrams okay these are very important the superior lateral surface by the middle cerebral artery the medial surface by the anterior cerebral artery and the inferior surface by the posterior cerebral artery right our last very important clinical question that is asked frequently is what are the arteries that are responsible for the medial and the lateral medullary syndromes there is a syndrome called medial medullary syndrome and a lateral medullary syndrome what are the arteries that can be implicated in those syndromes can you tell me see the medial surface of the medulla is supplied by this right here what is this this is the anterior spinal artery right so the medial medullary syndrome is due to the thrombosis of anterior spinal artery right whereas you can see that the lateral surface of the medulla is supplied by the vertebral arteries right so the lateral medullary syndrome occurs due to thrombosis of vertebral artery so these are two important questions which are asked frequently as mcqs as well as in your vivas so you need to know this i hope the blood supply of brain is very very clear it is very important one last revision i hope you can revise it with me now these are the vertebral arteries which are the branches of subclavian arteries they join together form the basilar artery and then the basilar artery gives out the terminal branch which is the posterior cerebral artery and then we have an internal carotid artery which gives out two branches the main larger one is the middle cerebral artery whereas the smaller terminal branch is the anterior cerebral artery anterior communicating artery between two anterior cerebral arteries posterior communicating artery between the posterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery right now the vertebral artery branches the anterior spinal artery the posterior spinal artery and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery whereas from the basilar artery here this is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the superior cerebellar artery so this winds up today's video i hope it was helpful so you know the drill you have to like comment share and subscribe to my channel and share it to your friends give me your feedback in the comment section i'd be glad to accept your feedback so i'll see you in the next video till then keep studying